Good morning, Tensor friends. Uh, I got some kind of fun here. I uh, really haven't found a use for it yet, but someday in my travels through general relativity, I'll find something to do with it. But it was fun. So what is the covariant derivative? What are we going to do with it? Who cares about it? Uh, not many people. I can guarantee you that. Let's take a look at this thing. Let's, let's talk about a vector and plane polar, the coordinates. Now, to, talk up, to use the covariant derivative, we need to have a something where the basis vectors are changing in the space, and that, and that would be curvilinear, the coordinates. The covariant derivative in uh, Cartesian, the coordinates, is just the directional derivative because the basis vectors do not change in the space. They're all unit vectors. They don't change. So you don't have a covariant derivative. It just becomes a directional derivative. So the covariant derivative is the general form of the directional derivative. I hope I said that right. All right, so we got a vector in uh, the plane 2D polar of the coordinates that we can expand as a linear combination of its components and its basis, the vectors, right? Now, let's take a derivative of this vector with respect to one of its, its coordinates, which is a directional derivative. So we write it like this. Now, here's the tricksters. Because these basis vectors are not constants, they're not constant in the space, they change in the space, you can't just write these down as you do in Cartesian the coordinates. You have to use the product rule. So we have the first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. In that case, this case, the same thing. So we get four terms. Now you've seen all this many times where this is what you would get in Cartesian the coordinates. It's no problem. These things are the problem. The derivative of a basis vector with respect to a coordinate. This is the problem. Okay. Now to define the, the covariant derivative, I'm going to switch to the summation notation. All right. So what this means is that when you see an index up, upper, and lower, it means it implies there's a summation symbol here. So you're summing over ever how many dimensions you have. So we're in two dimensions, so we're going to have a two terms here just like it was here. That's all it means. All right. So let's take the derivative of that. It's the same product rule. First times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. All right. There's our product rule. Now this guy here is the issue and the derivative of the ith basis vector with respect to the jth, the coordinate, is actually the definition of the Christoffel the symbol. So this capital gamma, this gamma kij is called the Christoffel the symbol. And uh, I did a whole video on this. Probably more information than you ever want to know. Uh, it's, I'm going to leave a link in the description. So, so that's what the definition of this is. Now let's look at an example. Let's just take an example of differentiating this uh, ER basis vector with respect to, uh, re re respect to theta. All right, so you see a K here and a K here. So this is the summation index again, right? So we know we're going to have two terms. So in the first case, we make k r. We know what i and j is. Here they are. It's r theta. And we know what, what k is because we chose it first. It's r r. Now we choose r. We, 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 we choose the k to be theta. Our i, j remains the same. And we put our k here. So, so this is an example of what that derivative actually would look like, right? All right, so let's get back on track. Here is how we defined our derivative of this vector with respect to a coordinate. And we said this was the, the uh, Christoffel, the symbol, the definition. So we're going to put this right back in here. Okay. We substitute that in and we get this. Now look at this. I have an I in the upper and an I in the lower, a K in the upper and a K in the lower. So both of these are summation indices or, dum or dummy indices, they call them in tensor calculus. So I can just swap these. There's no rule that says I can't because they're just summation indexes. They don't mean anything. So I swap them and I get an EI in both terms. I factor that out. 
and I have this, and this thing in the parentheses is the covariant derivative, the universal directional derivative. All right, and it is. It, it's got many ways to represent it. This is one way. Uh, the other way is to put the upside down, the delta here, the del operator, the nabla operator. There's many ways to do it. This is the only way I can because I don't have that upside down del in my, my software. I don't know why it's kind of weird because it's so common. Anyway, so this is the directional derivative definition, and it's, it's, it tells me by looking at it, I'm taking the derivative of the ith component of this vector with respect to the jth, the, co the coordinate. That's what it's telling me, right? The ith component of the vector with respect to the jth, the, the coordinate. All right, so let's go back to our vector and let's take uh, the directional, uh, the covariate derivative with respect to the theta. All right, so let's write down our uh, the summation, the symbols here, so we know what to follow. So in this case, we're taking the VR component of this, the vector, we're going to do it first. And so we write down R, I is R, and J is what we're differentiating with respect to, which is, is theta. So we got R theta, so we got IJ. So we just write these in here. So here's your derivative with respect to theta. Now we've got to expand this summation index uh, over R and theta. So in the first case, the K is R, I is R, the K is uh, R, and J is theta. So our Christoffel the symbol is gamma R, R theta. And now we change the K to theta, and we got R, the theta, theta. Now in polar, the coordinates, here are the only non-zero uh, Christoffel the symbols. There's three of them, and here they are. And uh, once again, the link to how where these come from is in the is in the description. If you really want to dig into these things, that's where you're going to to find it. So now we're just going to substitute these in here, right? <clears throat> so we keep this the same. Now we got VR. We write that down. But here we have the gamma R R theta. And we don't have one of those. That means it's zero. If I didn't write it here, it's all the rest of them are zero. There's eight of them. These are the only three non-zero ones. But but here's one, r theta theta. Here's r theta theta is my is is negative r. So we got one non-zero here. So we write it like this. So this is the covariant derivative of this component in the theta direction. All right. <laughs> now here's what it says. And I've read this like 20 times and I've, I've rewritten it over. It, there's no other way to write it. It's so wacky. It says a change in the R, th the R component of the vector V caused by a change in theta. So we're, we're varying the theta and seeing what effect that has on R is caused both by the normal thing you expect, the derivative of VR with respect to theta, and a change in the basis of vectors, which causes a portion of that vector that was originally in the theta direction to now point in the minus r direction. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. If you read this enough times, it, it becomes clear. It's pretty wacky, but that's the way it is. All right, let's get back on track here. Enough fun. All right, so let's write down our... Uh, Equation again, here's our equation. Now we got to do the other part of the vector, which is the change in theta with respect to theta. All right, so we just follow that same exact procedure now, but notice we're getting different Christoffel the symbols. We got gamma, theta, r, theta, gamma, theta, theta, theta. All right, now we write down our three non zero components again. We plug those in, and we get this. All right, so now we got both components of that der der derivative. So now we can write the whole derivative down. So now we have the covariant derivative of the vector because we took the covariant derivative of the components 
which accounted for the basis vector changes, and now we can just, just plug these in, and here's the whole equation. Now, you can make up some R's and thetas and play with this and, and plot things and, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I thought that was fun. I wanted to share it with you. All right, I'll see you later.